This scarecrow is pretty nice picture, actually, of Sammy walking by scarecrow, checking it out, whatever. But the one problem that I have with it is that there is too much contrast between the shadows and the highlights inside of this image. And this is a situation in which I guess I could have used a fill flash. Actually, things are a little far away for me to use a fill flash. I could have filled in some of this area a little better with a fill flash. I wouldn't have done a very good job with these shadows, though. And I just have this set on the auto setting for my camera, my Olympus E1. So I could have monkeyed around with the settings in order to get a better photograph. But if I had done that, of course, Sammy would have been out of the picture. He was already booking by then. So I really need to edit it after the fact. Now, if you run into a situation where either you wish you had used a flash, where you wish you had used a fill flash in this case, or you wish you hadn't used a flash, like you use a flash in a dark room and you have this very bright person and it looks like they were shot on the moon or something like that with the entire background is completely pitch black, why then your best tool in that situation is a tool called Shadow Highlight. And we're going to take advantage of that tool right now. It allows you to modify the shadows and highlights in an image independently in order to reduce the contrast of an image. I'm going to go up to the image menu, and I'm going to choose adjustments, and I'm going to choose shadow highlight. And notice, if you loaded my D key shortcuts, you'll see that I've given you a shortcut for this command because I think it's so Tom terrific. Control Alt S or Command Option S on the Mac. Now, that is actually a stolen shortcut. It's normally assigned in Photoshop to the Save As command, but the Save As command already has a shortcut, which is Control-Shift-S. So it's actually got two shortcuts sitting there. So I decided to take one of them away and assign it to Shadow Highlight instead. So we've got Control-Alt-S or Command-Option-S on the Mac. Now, by default, it wants to lighten your shadows and leave your highlights alone. So this has been the default setting since the last version, since Photoshop CS, which is where this command was introduced. And by the way, I should mention inside Photoshop CS2, you can use the shadow highlight command inside CMYK images, something you couldn't do before. Isn't that just ducky? Now, I think these default settings, even though I really, really like this command, I think these default settings are kind of rotten, actually. I, I rarely want to increase the shadows this dramatically. A shadow setting of 50% is extremely radical, and it starts creating, I'll go ahead and zoom in here by temporarily accessing my zoom tool, and it starts creating some fringes along the edges of things. Watch this. If I really increase the shadow setting, look what happens. We end up getting very light areas on the inside of these transitional edges, but the edges end up looking darker than the inside areas. So we have flaring. We actually get some flaring inside of here. You can see it inside Sammy a little bit too. That's a function of the way the shadow highlight command works. We're going to start taking a look at filters inside Lessons 6 and 7. And it turns out Shadow Highlight is actually more similar to those filters, like the sharpening and blurring filters, than it is to any of the other color correction commands. It actually searches for edges inside of the image and then flares inside of those edges. And we'll get more of a sense of that as we work inside this dialog box. But for the present, I would just take this value down a little bit. I just think something like 50% is way too high. So we'll just bolster the shadows a little bit. And if you want to get sort of a before and after version of the image, go ahead and click on preview to see what it looked like before. These are the original shadows. Then I'll turn on preview again to see what the shadows look like when they're brightened up just a little bit. So it's pretty nifty. Actually, this command works really, really great. Now, I do definitely need to take the highlights down inside this image. And so I am going to. I'll go ahead and zoom back out here so that we can see what kind of changes we have wrought. So this is before, this is after. Already, I think, a much better looking image. But you do have to watch out for those flares. Notice along the mountains, for example. That's actually really a great example of what I'm talking about. You can see these edges at the top of the mountains look darker than the interior of the mountains. And before, they didn't. If I turn off preview, see, they didn't look different before. They looked very, very much the same. So we had kind of this uniform blue going across the mountains. When I turn on the command, you can see that it starts light and gets darker and darker as we go up. And that's a function of this flaring that is part and parcel of the shadow highlight command. It's really difficult to get around that. It's just one of the things that is going to happen. But you do need to keep an eye out for it.